Hello and welcome. We've got chapter 13 today. In the 23rd year of Joash, the son of Ahaziah, king of Judah, Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, became king over Israel at Samaria, and he reigned 17 years. So yesterday the focus was more so on Judah, and now we're kind of swinging back to Israel. Verse 2. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, and followed the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, with which he made Israel sin. He did not turn from them. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he gave them continually into the hand of Hazael, king of Aram, and into the hand of Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazael. Then Jehoahaz entreated the favor of the Lord, and the Lord listened to him, for he saw the oppression of Israel, how the king of Aram oppressed them. The Lord gave Israel a deliverer, so that they escaped from under the hand of the Arameans, and the sons of Israel lived in their tents as formerly. Nevertheless, they did not turn away from the sins of the house of Jeroboam, with which he made Israel sin, but walked in them, and the Asherah also remained standing in Samaria. For he left to Jehoahaz of the army not more than fifty horsemen and ten chariots and ten thousand footmen, for the king of Aram had destroyed them and made them like the dust at threshing. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoahaz and all that he did and his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Jehoahaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. And Joash, his son, became king in his place. Okay, quick pause before we get into verse 10. Uh, let's remember that there was a king of Israel and a king of Judah, both named Joash. The one we're focusing on today is the one from Israel. And to make it even more confusing, like we've discussed before, both of them can interchange their name to either Joash or Jehoash. And scripture seems to do that quite a bit, making it a bit challenging. All right, so let's keep that in mind. Verse 10. In the 37th year of Joash, king of Judah, Jehoash, which is Joash, the son of Jehoahaz, became king over Israel in Samaria and reigned 16 years. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not turn away from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, with which he made Israel sin, but he walked in them. Now the rest of the acts of Joash and all that he did in his might, with which he fought against Amaziah, king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Amaziah was uh, Judah's Joash's son, who became king at the end of chapter 12 yesterday. Okay, verse 13. So Joash slept with his fathers, and Jeroboam sat on his throne, and Joash was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. When Elisha became sick with the illness of which he was to die, Joash, the king of Israel, came down to him and wept over him and said, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. Elisha said to him, Take a bow and arrows. So he took a bow and arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, Put your hand on the bow. And he put his hand on it. Then Elisha laid his hands on the king's hands. He said, Open the window toward the east. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot. And he shot. And he said, The Lord's arrow of victory, even the arrow of victory over Aram, for you will defeat the Arameans at Aphek until you have destroyed them. Then he said, Take the arrows. And he took them. And he said to the king of Israel, Strike the ground. And he struck it three times and stopped. So the man of God was angry with him and said, You should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Aram until you would have destroyed it. But now you shall strike Aram only three times. All right, so a little bit of uh, lack of information here that we need to factor in. A quiver in someone's arrow holder typically would have had about six arrows. So when Elisha told Joash to strike the ground, it was either a known fact during that arrow, uh, during that era, excuse me, of what he meant by unloading his quiver, or there was a discussion between them that's not recorded for us. When Joash obeyed Elisha by shooting an arrow out the window to the east, it symbolized the Lord's deliverance for Israel uh, through the defeat of the Syrian army by Joash. Then, when he failed to shoot all the arrows in his quiver at the ground, it displayed a lack of faith and obedience, resulting in God deciding to only grant three victories over the Syrians instead of completely destroying them. Elisha died and they buried him. Now the bands of the Moabites would invade the land in the spring of the year. And a reminder that the Moabites were descendants of Moab, the son of Lot, from back in the book of Genesis. Verse 21. As they were burying a man, behold, they saw a marauding band, and they cast the man into the grave of Elisha. And when the man touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. 
So this likely displayed that the power of God was still active through Elisha, and even after his death, God's promise to restore Israel remained true. Verse 22. Now Hazael, king of Aram, had oppressed Israel all the days of Jehoahaz, but the Lord was gracious to them and had compassion on them and turned to them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It would not destroy them or cast them from his presence until now. When Hazael, king of Aram, died, Ben-Hadad, his son, became king in his place. Then Jehoash, the son of uh, Jehoahaz, took again from the hand of Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazael, the cities uh, which he had taken in war from the hand of Jehoahaz, his father. Three times Joash defeated him and recovered the cities of Israel. So God will continue to live up to his promise to the patriarchs and displays mercy and compassion towards Israel despite the way they treated him. So the takeaway today is that God is always good. And thank you guys for being here. Looking forward to uh, seeing you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Uh, stay close to the Lord. Be praying for others. Be praying for our situation in the world right now. And uh, God bless you. Take care.